Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to a new video. Today we are going to have a look at the journal in systemd. We are going to see how to activate it, we are going to see how to filter it and how to use it. So before we get started, let me also remind you if you click the join button under the video, you will become a member of the channel that will help and support my work a lot and I'm very thankful for that. Enough talking, let's jump into the video. So here I am on the desktop of Arch and what I'm going to show you in this video is going to probably vary slightly from your distribution, especially regarding the sudo command that I'm going to use in this video, but most of the time you will find exactly the same commands and the journal here in systemd it works actually the same in every distribution. So, so as you know, systemd is a management service which boots up after the Linux kernel and takes care of everything in the system. Now, one of the aspects that systemd is also managing is the journal. Now, previous systemd, the journal was actually used with other tools like syslog, for example, which many admins probably still use today, but systemd has also its way of log in the system with the journal D daemon. Now the journal D daemon, the journal system here in system D can also be used as a complement to existing logging systems like syslog, for example. But in this video, I want to focus on the journal of system D. Now the journal is using the journal D daemon, which is running anyway on system D. And the main interface to check your logs here with the journal in system D, it's journal CTL. Now, there is something that you need to be aware of is that in some distributions, actually, the journal is not persistent. And that's the case, for example, still today in RHEL 8, but many other distributions actually are already setting the journal per system. The way to check that is to see if you have the var log journal directory available in your system. So for example, here we are in Arch. So if I type in ls-l on slash var slash log slash journal, you can see the directory is there and the journal is present. That means in this system, the journal of systemd is persistent. And that's because this directory was created. If it's not in your system, then the journal for systemd will be there on runtime only, but it will be lost when you reboot the machine. And if you want to make it permanent, you can just create the journal directory and it will be persistent, or you can also edit the journal.com file, which is under the Etsy systemd directory. So for example, we can type in here sudo vim slash Etsy slash systemd slash journald.conf and we need to of course authenticate and here you can set also your options. So you can see by default it says storage auto and that's going to check basically if the journal directory is available under var log and then it will be persistent. Otherwise you can also change this value to persistent if you want to do it from here. Now let me close this up here and go back to the terminal. Now the main command to interface with the log is journal CTL. So we can just type in here journal CTL and hit enter. And here we get a long list of uh, journal entries. And you can see here it's starting from last Friday and it goes until now. And the first command here is from August 20 at 10 o'clock in the morning. And you can scroll through here all the logs in your journal. Now, these are a lot of lines, so I'm not going to go through all of these. But uh, just for you to know, if you're using the journal CTL command, it's going to show you everything available in the system in user space and also in kernel space. So you can see here we have also some kernel messages and we have also other kind of messages as well here. So let me quit out from here by hitting Q. Now we can filter this down, of course, by using the switches. So for example, if we use journal CTL B for boot, it's going to basically show us the journal for our last boot. So you can see in this case, it's going to show me basically every entry in the log starting from today when I turn on my computer. Today is August 22. And again, we have here kernel messages. We have here also some other messages as well. But again, it's a long list of log messages that we have. And we can check here what's in the log. Now we can also display logs for other boots. So if we type in, for example, journal CTL dash dash list dash boots, you will see here a list of previous boots we have in this machine. So for example, they are numbered here on the left column from zero, from minus nine actually to zero. So if you choose to see one of those logs, for example, from Friday, let's say the minus eight, let's pick up the minus eight here. We can type in journal 
CTL dash B for boot, and we specify which boot we want to see. So in this case, minus eight, and then hit enter. And you can see this boot was actually August 20. And again, it's gonna show us all the entries in the log for that boot. So there are a lot of messages in here. Now let's clean up the terminal again. We can also see the log by using dates. For example, we can type in journal CTL dash dash since and then let's specify one date here. I'm going to put in here 2021-08-20. And I'm going to specify also the time. I'm going to say here 10 colon 00 and close the quotes. And you can see we have the same result. The journal from the 20th of August starting from 10 o'clock. So this is another way on how you can see the journal. Now, one of the filters that you can use here in the journal is to check your services. So for example, I wanna check here the journal for the SSHD daemon. And to do this, I wanna type in sudo journal ctl dash u for unit and SSHD is gonna be the unit in this case and then hit enter. Now, in this case, I need to authenticate because I'm using the sudo command. And here you can see, I see all the entry in the log for SSHD starting from Friday. Now, this is a fairly fresh installation. That's why I don't have many logs in here, but this is how you can filter down basically all the logs for SSHD in the system. Now, the same way we used the switch also before, we can also use here the dash B to show us only the last boot. And as you can see here, we have the last boot here, which is today, August 22nd. Now pay attention to these three lines because now I'm gonna type in systemctl status sshd. Now you can see this command, basically it's showing us the status of the service. So again, you can see here, it's loaded from user lib system D system. This is the name of the service. It's enabled in the system, although the vendor preset is disabled. We have here the status, which is active and running, see 16 minutes the main PID, the task, the memory usage. And down here, we have exactly the same lines of the journal CTL command. So the status command is basically showing us also log entries directly here. And that's a nice thing here in systemd that we can check always with the status command. Now, another thing that I would like to show you is how you can show messages by priority. So the journal is using actually the same priorities as the standard syslog system is using. So zero is emergency, one is alert, two is critic, three is error, four is warning, five is notice, six is info, and seven is debug. So for example, let's check here for emergency messages. That would be very bad to have them in the system. We can check those by typing in journal CTL dash P for priority. So priority for emergency is zero. You can also use emerge if you want to use the word. And I want to check this basically in all my logs. So I'm just going to hit enter now. And you can see I have nothing. So that's a good sign. Now I'm going to do the same here for, let's say, alert. So I'm just going to replace the zero here with one. Or you can also type in alert if you prefer. And again, we have no messages. So that's a good sign. Now let's jump here one level and let's go to the error level. So let's type in here the number three or ERR. And you can see here we have some errors. So we have here some light DM errors and these are actually from Friday. And I wanna check actually today's error messages. So I'm just gonna quit from here. And I'm gonna use again the dash B for the last boot. And you can see here we have only three messages for error. And that is regarding libvirt D. So this is actually KVM. And that's because actually I had to kill before KVN because it was not working properly. And that's why I have an error here. And we have also one error message for LightEM, unable to locate daemon control file. That's okay. It's not a big error. So I'm just going to let it there and I'm not going to pay too much attention to it yet. But this is how you can check your log for errors in this case. And as I said before, we can also check, for example, for number four, which is warnings. And here you can see in the last boot, we have a lot of warnings here. So for example, we have many kernel messages as well. We have messages for ACPI call. We have also here warning messages for cinnamon and so on. Now we can also check, for example, for notice, which is number five. And again, here we have some messages for the notice. You will get fairly many messages here. And we can also look the info messages with the number six. These are just information messages. These are mostly kernel messages here. And we can also check messages for debug here by entering the number seven. 
And there we have again many kernel messages that we can check for debug. Now, when we use the less command, for example, we use the end switch to show the latest number of lines we want to see. We can use the same thing for the journal CTL command. So if I type in journal CTL dash n and let's say i want to see only the last five lines of the journal i'm going to type five here and this is how it works so it's working the same as for example in the less command so this might be useful if you are looking for just the last lines of the log now another option that you might want to know is the journal ctl dash k option which is going to show us basically only kernel messages so i'm going to add here dash p for the last boot and you can see here, these are all kernel messages starting from today at 10.30 when I turn on my machine. And it's going to be for sure a long list because there are always many messages here for the kernel. But the dash K option is basically showing only kernel messages. Another aspect which is very important for the journal is to know how much disk space it's using. To find it out in your system, you can type in journal CTL dash dash disk dash usage. You can see right now I'm using 24 megabytes of space in my file system. Now with time the log might pile up and you might want to actually shrink it down if you don't need all the logs. So you can do this by typing in sudo journal ctl dash dash vacuum dash size equal and you can specify the size for which you want to shrink your journal. Now in my case 24 megabytes is fine and I don't want to lose my journal right now so I'm not going to run this command but with this command you can basically shrink down your journal if it's too big. Now let me delete this command here. Now you can also change this in the journald.com file that we saw before. So let me type in sudo vim slash etsy slash systemd slash journald Dot conf. And you can see here again the options that we have. These are the default, but if we uncomment these options, for example, like system max use, and this option is specifically for this. It specifies basically the maximum disk space that can be used by the journal in persistent storage, like we have right now. We have also system max file size. This basically defines how big the files can be in the journal before they are rotated. System max files number basically defines the number of max files available in the journal. And also we have the same option for runtime. So if you want to change this, this is where you can do that. So let me close this out from here. And so the journal CTL utility is the interface to our journal here in systemd. And I showed you here how you can basically see your journal, how you can filter the journal and what kind of messages you can see. To check the journal might be useful, especially if you are encountering some errors in your system. For example, again, if I type in system CTL status SSHD, here probably if I would have errors, I would see probably here what the error would be. For example, if port 22 wouldn't be reachable, then I might get an idea that the firewall is actually blocking this. And I would be able to go into my firewall and check if port 22 is open and I would be open it from there if it was closed. Then I would run the status command again to check that the port is now open and the error message will be gone. So this is just one example, but the journal has many messages and they might be helpful to you to troubleshoot your system. So this was a basic overview of the journal in systemd. As you have seen in the video, it's very simple to configure and it provides very valuable information. Now, if you have any question about it, let me know in the comments below and I will try to answer you as soon as I can. And again, I remind you, if you click the join button under the video, you will support my work and I will be very thankful for that. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I really appreciate that and I'll see you very soon in the next one.